Hello and welcome to Unacademy, the one-stop solution for an English medium UPSC aspirant. Today we take our R pass journey forward and we are going to discuss a very important development, very interesting development with regards to ancient India and archaeology, which is the Vadnagar excavations, which have actually yielded a lot of important continuities and artifacts, which help us change the landscape of ancient India. Now, this topic is a very, very important topic for UPSC prelims and mains, both because of two reasons. First is that this is the hometown of our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Narendra Modi comes from Varnagar. And second, it is filling a gap, it is a major development with regards to the dark age of archaeology, which is basically between the Indus Valley Civilization and the rise of Mahajanpadas. And therein lies the importance and value of Vadnagar because it has changed the basic understanding and landscape with regards to that. So I hope that you've been liking these sessions called Our Pass is a special series for you for current affairs itself. And today we are going to take a topic which is both important for ancient India and for art and culture. Now, before I go into the basic current affairs part, I want to discuss something with you, which is the concept of ancient India timeline. I will use this opportunity to give you a basic understanding. So when we talk about ancient India, just to give you a basic understanding of how the timeline actually works, is that we have, we have different periods and if you know me, you would know that I work with timelines. We have at 2 million BCE, what we call as the Paleolithic period. Thereafter, at 10,000 BCE or before Common Era, you have Mesolithic. Thereafter, at 4,000, we have 4,000 BCE, we have the Neolithic period. Thereafter, between 2600 to 1500 or 1700. These are two dates which are used. We have the IVC and thereafter what we have is a gap area. A gap area which is basically 200 years here and from 1500 BCE onwards we get what we call as the early Vedic texts and early Vedic period. Then at 1000 BCE we have the later Vedic period, later Vedic period and thereafter by 500 or rather 600, 500 BCE, we have the rise of Mahajanapadas and after Mahajanapadas at 324 BCE, we have the mighty Mauryas which will rise after Alexander's invasion. Now, when we talk about history, till this point, we call it prehistory because we only have archaeological records. After this, this is called proto-history because it only has or it rather has archaeological records, early writing, but we have not deciphered the script of IVC. And 1500 onwards is called the historical period because we have the Vedic texts, which basically tell us the Rig Vedic society, the later Vedic society and how the Indian society was developing. Now, generally, generally, this period, which is from 1500 to 600 BC, Though we have a lot of textual references, we have a lot of texts which are written with during this period in Sanskrit, Brahmi uh, uh, script itself. You have this concept of a dark age of archaeology. Why is it called dark age of archaeology? Wherein, wherein we do not find evidences, very rare. We will have two, three sites, but we don't have a site where we find a stratified layer or a layer in which we get to know about each and every period from 1500 to 600. After 600, we have very important cities, the Mahajanpadas emerging. So, for example, the capitals of the Mahajanpadas are there, but we have no reference in between this period. And therefore, this is called the dark age of archaeology, wherein we have no basic evidences related to this period. Why am I telling this? Because this is important to understand the importance of Vadnagar. So, what I've established to you till this point is, is the basic timeline till the Mauryas. 
after the Mauryas at 184 BCE, we will have the rise of the post Mauryans, which is the Shungas, thereafter the Indo Greeks, thereafter the Sakas, then the Kushanas and the Satwanas in the south. And we'll have the Sangam polities in the background with the megalithic, which starts in the same period when Vedic period is rising in North India. In South India, we have the megalithics. And from the Mauryan period or just before it, we have Sangam polities rising. And thereafter, when post Maurya is over, we have Gupta. Gupta will go on from 300 CE to 600. Thereafter, the early medieval period, which is after 750 CE. So, this is the basic timeline. This is what is very important. Half of the questions of ancient India can be done from this only. However, what is more important to us is this dark age of archaeology concept, wherein we don't have any archaeological evidences in the period of 1500 to 600 BC. Now, herein comes the context of what has happened in Vadnagar. A joint study of the IIT Kharagpur along with the ASI has actually given us a very important continuity series in the form of Vadnagar city. Vadnagar city has given us evidences of cultural continuity. Now, what do you mean by cultural continuity? Cultural continuity would mean that in the same place we get references from, for example, 750 BC till the modern period. This is quite rare, quite rare. That way is it is being believed and it is being argued that Vadnagar may be the oldest living city. And herein lies the importance of this topic because there are certain terminologies which are in the news which you should know for the prelims and the mains examination. Now, let me, let me also give you these terminologies. There are three terms which are being used. One is called cultural continuity. Second is the concept of a living city. And there's also one more smaller but important study inbuilt into the Vadnagar study, study which is basically, which is basically the concept of climatic change invasions and migrations which have happened into India and this is a very interesting study I have the article with me I will show you and read out a certain section out of it it's a quite an interesting article which talks about climate change invasions migrations and the movement of empires but let's talk about this first concept which is concept of cultural continuity now Vadnagar has had different names throughout history from Vridhanagar, Anandpur, the, Anta, uh, the Antarapur and Nagar. These are terms which have been used for Vadnagar in different texts itself. And it was based on a very important trade route. That is why it is a city which has survived and has generally been quite important. From the central sector, from Sindh, from northwestern sector, from south, Vadnagar converges on two, two trade routes. But what has the city yielded in this archaeological evidence and that is why it is important is that is that when we went for excavation when we went for excavation we are finding artifacts and layers which deal with 800 bc and this is where it is getting placed into the later vedic period and what is more astonishing is this dark age of archaeology between decline of indus valley civilization and rise of mahajanpadas it is going from 800 and giving us the story till the colonial period. And this is where Vadnagar becomes a very important site. Mains question for sure, prelims question, a reference can come because as it is an important city because of a prime minister and over and above that, it is yielding a evidence series which is quite diverse. This is why this is called cultural continuity. This is called cultural continuity means that it starts from a certain point and continuously we are getting layer by layer evidences of each of these periods and therefore therefore it is challenging the notion that there is a dark age of archaeology in India or not and therefore there is also an unpublished there's an unpublished study which is saying that certain artifacts which we have found in in this site are also dating to 1400 BC which would basically link IVC with the Mahajanpada period and in a way the 
basic mystery and conundrum of a dark age will be gone and the Vadnagar site is going to become the linkage between these two sectors. We are awaiting for the publishing of this basic article which is an archaeological article but the dark age of archaeology will be challenged. So what I have ascertained and basically told you till this point is two things. Why is this topic important for prelims and mains? Because it is challenging something which has been in the news, which has been in the academic circles for quite a long time, which is the concept of dark age of archaeology, which is basically between the decline of the IVC till close to 600 BC. We have sites in between, but they do not show cultural continuity. They can be for a certain period. There's no cultural continuity or there's no site which continuously has developed from this period to other. That is a very important concept which is there in archaeology. If you have cultural continuity, it is quite important in that sense. Now, from the dark age of archaeology, the first thing we understand is Vadnagar can challenge it. Now, second is the concept of a living city. Now, what do you mean by the concept of a living city, a pure concept which can again come in the prelims and mains itself? What we mean by a living city is the concept of how if I go through the layers of Vadnagar, I get a continuous seri series of development from pre-2nd century BC, which would basically be the uh, what we call as the dark age concept itself, the period between 1500 to 750. The uh, main main point where we're getting it is 750 BC, which basically plates it places it in between the later Vedic period. And from that 2nd century to 1st century, then from 1st to 4th, 5th to 9th, 10th to 13th, 14th to 17th, 17th, 18th, 19th century. From basically Mauryan, you have Indo-Greek, which is basically post-Mauryan, and thereafter, up till the colonial period, we are finding a living city. This is a very important term which you can expect in the examination, the concept of a living city, a city which is living from the point it came into existence till today and is yielding different artifacts related to it. It's a very important concept, living city, dark age of archaeology. Now, this implies to us, this implies to us that from the later Vedic period itself till Buddhi, the Buddhist Mahajanpada period, we are having evidences of Hindu, Jain, Islamic influences, Buddhist influences on the same site itself. Further, further, it has uncovered seven cultural layers from the Mauryan, Indo-Greek, Indo-Synthian, which is basically Sakas, then Hindu Solanki, Sultanate Mughal, and the Gaikwad, which is Maratha, British connection, which in itself is extraordinary. Therefore, Vadnagar is now being touted as the oldest living city in India. Basically, if I go to this site, I can see the history of India in one go itself. From the, from the period of, of the later Vedic period till the colonial period and the Marathas. And therefore, it has now become a very important concept within the larger constellation of our understanding of ancient India. So, we've established two things. First, Vadnagar establishes and in a way challenges, it establishes a link, challenges the dark age of archaeology concept first. Second, which is more important is, it is now being considered as the oldest, remember, the oldest living city because it is giving us, it is giving us from its different layers, different concepts of or different artifacts from the first to the seventh, the concept of a uh, later Vedic, thereafter Mauryan, post-Mauryan, then you have the Mughal and Sultanate period, and even, even the colonial and the Maratha period. And therefore, therefore, Vad Vadnagar, in a way, gives us two major breakthroughs, and then we'll move to the third point. I'm again trying to consolidate as much as possible. We will move to the third point, which is basically going to be, first point is, that it challenges, you should know this, it challenges the, the concept of 
of or rather we'll write it in a different sense altogether we have vadnagar vadnagar through its seven layers or the excavations what it has done is it has given us it has given us between 1500 bc to 750 bc to the linkage to 600 bc therefore it challenges archaeologically it challenges the concept of a dark age very important concept dark age is mostly used as a context for the 18th century but there's a dark age of archaeology also where we don't get any form of continuity the second thing would be that because of the seven layers we have also established that there are there are it is a living city because from the point where we find the first layer till the seventh we are able to establish a city which has gone through different periods in different ways and every different period is represented in each of the stratified layers archaeology is done from if you find it at the lowest point that is where the first one is going to be and at the top we will have the seventh seventh stratified layer in that regard very interesting very important for your preparation generally so we've established two things vadnagar challenges the dark age concept of archaeology and second it is also a living city it's also a living city it links up the first to the seventh and in a way in a way gives us the glimpse of the history of india in one side altogether now the second aspect or rather the third aspect of what i want to discuss with you here is a very interesting concept which is trapped inside this excavation and what has been trapped inside the excavation is the concept of how invasions and migrations in india have happened in the way how climate has played a very important role what the study has basically argued is that climate is a determining factor in invasions and migrations so you would know that environment also has a history and now by looking at different layers of archaeology we can decide if it was arid it was wet it was very arid or it was flooding it has the the level the layers of the soil the uh, what we call as a top soil itself is able to give us that idea because the color of the layer is going to be different but but before i go into this article itself what i want to give you is the gist see we have two cultural zones one is the west asian zone and we have one the indian subcontinent the indian subcontinent now what this study is pointing out is that there is a positive correlation or a direct correlation between any form of migration any form of migration coming from this sector from the west asian zone be it migration be it invasions there's a correlation between what is the climate here and what is the climate here now what the study has ascertained and established is that when the west asian zone is hyper arid hyper arid means very dry and it is basically drought like situation when it is hyper arid the indian subcontinent is able to show more resilience and the duab region in that regard which is the ganga yamuna duab it is showing positive environment rather the west asian sector has a negative environment which is a hyper arid area and what is the correlation is that any in which the timing of invasions and migrations are matching when there is a hyper arid environment here and when there is a favorable zone in the indian subcontinent basically it is giving a relationship between invasions and migrations with climate whenever there is an unfavorable climate in the west asian sector we have seen invasions and migrations on the other hand 
whenever there is an unfavorable and this is the second part of that study whenever there is unfavorable environment in the indian subcontinent and it should be the case altogether climate has a direct proportionality to political stability and and the concept of decline or growth in the sense that when the climate is extremely favorable the political stability is very very high and therefore we have seen no environment uh, no empire declining in the period when the climate is very good however as soon as the climate becomes problematic we see that the political stability also starts to go down so therefore therefore climate is a very important determining factor between the political stability of an empire and the the economy and the concept of environmental factors this is a very important concept vadnagar again has become so important in that regard because now we are seeing how environment and history intersect so now in gs paper 1 you can expect a question we already had a question wherein in 2023 they ask you how geography has determined determined the the political history of india now it can talk about how environment can decide the political history of india then you will say that upsc asking a question which is out of syllabus no it is not out of syllabus it is a current affairs question straight forward it is based on an article on vadnagar because climate climate has established to us that if climate is positive there is a positive correlation with political stability however when you have negative here and positive here climate wise there is an invasion there is a concept of movement in this sector just to read out this section to you in a, in technical terms see this is based on a very important article which came out in the science review article and it talked about the historical significance of vadnagar excavations and i will read out two sections to you and you will understand why it is important see first it says the hyper arid phases witnesses decline in material culture craftsmanship and or increased social uh, instability yet the settlement was never abandoned thus making vadnagar the oldest living city so what it is telling us is that even though even though there are phases in which vadnagar went through decline it was never abandoned but this part has been established wherein social instability political stability and economy are very closely related to the environment but what is more interesting is it talks about the arid central asian sector or west asian sector here in it is saying and very interestingly it is saying whenever there are seven major phases of invasions and migrations into india they coincide with hyper arid or uninhabitable phases in the central asian sector so there was a push factor out of central asia in order to send them to the indian subcontinent which is based on the idea that there is a negative environmental situation in the in the central asian sector that is why migration and invasions now what i'll do is i'll i'll show you these artifacts and then we can consolidate this whole discussion see the excavations have given us different forms of seals they've given us different forms of artifacts which are ranging from different periods itself but the beauty of this site is that if you go vertically down you are getting every stratified layer but my purpose here my purpose here is basically to give you a consolidated understanding of this whole topic which you can use in mains and prelims both now let's try to do that we have established in the past half an hour what we've established is that vadnagar is a very important site when it comes to the heritage and culture of india the first thing which vadnagar challenges and asserts to us is the fact that it is a a site which can challenge the dark age of archaeology because it is giving us it is giving us evidences from 750 bce till the 19th century and specifically between 1500 bce 
to 600 BC, we have a certain period where we have no real evidences in archaeology and that is going to get challenged by Vadnagar. Second, what Vadnagar excavation has told us is that it is going to be the oldest living city in the form that oldest living city means that it will be able to establish it will be able to establish the concept of the concept of a continuous existence this site has never never this site has never been abandoned this site has never been abandoned we have we have continuous we can write cultural we can write continuous cultural existence and that is very very important this site has never been abandoned even though there have been ups and downs and that that is why it makes it a very important site now the third concept is where it becomes even more interesting is it gives us a glimpse of how climate has affected history so this is the correlation which Vadnagar has established to us in the past half an hour which is that whenever whenever the climate has been favorable in the west asian sector in central asia we have seen no migration or no form of movement or invasion however whenever there is a non-favorable environmental situation in the central asian sector we see movement from from the central asian sector into the indian subcontinent which corresponds with in this history of 3000 years the invasions and migrations which have happened over the period of time second what it has also established is that if the climate is favorable the political stability the social stability and the economic stability is quite well however when it is negative it leads to decline however vadnagar is a site even with negative climatic conditions it has survived the test of time in the larger context so what to do with this information what to do with this information it's a technical discussion but what to do with this information in prelims you make sure that you remember the name of Vardnagar generally second it can be asked that what is the concept of a living city and the concept of dark age of archaeology however where the question becomes totally realistic is actually mains wherein they can ask you how climate has a certain relationship with history and Vadnagar needs to be given as an example. So make sure, make sure that the legacy of Vadnagar in that regard, the enduring legacy of Vadnagar therefore becomes an example, a way of understanding how a single site which is very rare in India, how a single site has yielded from 800 or 750 BCE till the colonial period everything which needs to be known and this is the concept of a living city please pay attention we have other living cities also for example Varanasi multiple living cities which were the capitals of the Mahajanpadas but we had textual references now that textual reference is gone and we have archaeological references which makes it even more important in that sense. So make sure that you remember Vadnagar. It is an important part of your current affairs. We expect a question in mains and it has given us more theoretical understanding. So in this discussion what I've tried to do is I've given you a basic overview of ancient India, the concept and importance of timelines. Over and above that, I have also explained to you the concept of a living city, the concept of cultural continuity and a correlation which you can use in the essay also, which is whenever there's an essay which talks about the importance of environment, you can always talk about Vadnagar, you can always talk about the concept we've discussed here. Though it should not come as a surprise to us that climate actually is very, very important for the survival of different empires, but this has been ascertained and given basically proof that Vadnagar is an example that environment has a very important impact on different aspects of our existence. So I hope that you found this discussion very, very fruitful. And though it is ancient India, it is still quite relevant for your preparation. So in this series till this point, we've discussed different types of 
subjects. For example, we discussed Chauri Chaura modern India, we've discussed art and culture, we're discussing Vardnagar, we've discussed uh, the concept of the Ayodhya temple itself. We will try to keep on adding into this series, but I hope the Vardnagar discussion has given you a new insight, a new understanding of this site, the importance of it, coincidentally also the hometown of a prime minister, a great prime minister in that sense and therefore a great city he comes from, the oldest living city in that regard. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.